Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the July Revolution of 1830. In July 1830, the people of Paris took up arms to overthrow a repressive, reactionary king. Echoing the revolutionary fervor of four decades earlier, the people wanted to protect their political rights and establish an equitable government for France. After the final fall of Napoleon in 1815, the Bourbon monarchy was restored and Louis XVIII became king of France. Louis had spent more than a decade in exile during the French Revolution in the reign of Napoleon, and when he ascended to the throne, he allowed for some liberal political reforms, including the creation of an elected chamber of deputies. In 1824, Louis XVIII died and was succeeded by his younger brother, who was now King Charles X. Unlike his brother, Charles was a reactionary who was determined to eradicate the liberal reforms of the French Revolution, if not reestablish absolutism in France. To that end, Charles X began to implement more repressive anti-revolutionary laws. For example, he compensated émigré royalists who had fled France during the Revolution for their loss of property a burden that fell largely on middle-class government bondholders. Charles also attempted to restore the position of the Catholic Church by granting the clergy more power and by making certain religious offenses punishable by death. Though the king's anti-revolutionary actions provoked some public protest, it was his appointment of the ultra-reactionary Jules de Polignac as prime minister in 1829 that led to a profound political crisis. The liberal members of the Chamber of Deputies strongly objected to Polignac. In response, the king dissolved the chamber and called for new elections. When those elections returned a chamber unfavorable to the king, he dissolved it again and seemed poised to dispense with even the semblance of parliamentary government. The July ordinances provoked an immediate backlash among the people of Paris. Within hours, protesters began to fill the streets. Over the next three days, known as the Trois Glorieuses, the protests became open revolution, as pitched battles between the king's supporters and opponents were fought across the city. Some 4,000 barricades were erected and manned by students and working class Parisians. The revolutionaries attacked royal troops and gradually captured important buildings across the city. On July 29th, the Hôtel de Ville, Paris's city hall, was occupied by the revolutionaries. That evening, liberal politicians entered the battered building and set about creating a new government for France. As the revolution was reaching its apex, Louis Philippe, Duke of Orleans, and Charles X's distant cousin arrived in Paris. To many people, the liberal-minded Louis Philippe represented a viable political alternative to the repressive Charles. On August 2nd, Charles X, unable to contain the political tide, abdicated the throne in favor of his grandson Henri. However, the Chamber of Deputies backed Louis Philippe and on August 9th proclaimed him King of the French. Louis Philippe, the citizen king, vowed to rule as a constitutional monarch. Yet, his appointment as king left many French Republicans disillusioned and ultra-royalists angered. Though he would reign for 18 years, his position was repeatedly threatened by popular uprisings and political discord. In 1848, Louis Philippe was overthrown by another revolution and the eventual establishment of the Second French Republic. In many ways, the July Revolution was a continuation of the French Revolution of 1789. The people of Paris and France took dramatic actions to affect political change and sparked a larger social discourse that impacted and shaped European society throughout the rest of the 19th century. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.